相信，你可以勇敢的往前冲吧。有想法就有办法。相信我可以，有目标就往上爬。你相信你可以，勇敢的。一起到达，是 
Good morning, good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our Facebook Live session on Secrets Revealed. Yes, thank you for joining our Secrets Revealed series again on tax uh, techniques to solve tax audit issues. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Today, I'm going to share with you another technique. Yeah, I'm going to share with you another technique on how to solve tax audit issue. But I will do that. 11 o'clock sharp. Yeah, I will do that at 11 o'clock sharp, which is just a few more minutes from now. A few more minutes from now, we will be starting our techniques to solve tax audit issues Facebook Live. And I'll be sharing with you another case on how we actually help our client to solve the tax audit issue. And today we have a bonus session as well. Yeah, today we have a bonus session that talks about withholding tax on software. Yeah, now, so if you have just joined us, you have to just join us. Just stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. We're going to start at 11 o'clock. But help me do one thing. Since you're so early, since you're here early today, help me do one thing. That is to share this Facebook Live out. Yeah, share this Facebook Live out with your friends, your family, your business partner, business associates. Let them learn this techniques together with you and let them learn how to solve tax audit issues whenever there are tax audit that comes thereafter. Yeah. So, Help me to share this out by just doing a very simple thing. That is to share, tap the share button. Now, if you are viewing it from a phone, if you're viewing it from a phone, go to the bottom of the screen, you will find that share button, right? Just tap the share button and you'll be sharing this Facebook Live out. Or if you are viewing it from a computer, you would also find a share button and click that share button, click that share button so that you can share it to your friends, family, business partner, business associates as well. Now, or if you see you have anyone in your mind, you have someone in your mind right now uh, that you want him or her to come in to join you, tag his or her name, tag his or her name into the comment box right now so that he or she will come in, right, and learn this together with you. And let me tell you, they will thank you for sharing this with them, yeah? All right, so we're going to start at 11 o'clock, just a few more minutes from now. Don't go anywhere, don't go anywhere. Just share this Facebook Live out and I shall see you later at 11 o'clock, yeah? All right, I'll see you at 11 o'clock sharp later. Okay, okay. 
Okay, it's eleven o'clock. It's eleven o'clock already, and as promised, I told you I will start my Facebook Live session right now, and I'm going to share with you techniques. Yes, I'm going to review with to you my secrets on techniques to solve tax audit issues. Welcome everyone yeah, to my Facebook Live today on a Friday morning at eleven o'clock. As usual, I will be sharing another case with you here. Yeah, on how to solve tax audit issues, right? No, 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 no. I can see more and more people coming in already. I can see more and more people coming in, but well, you know what, you know what? If you have just joined us, yeah, or if you are joining us for the very first time and you say, hey, this is like something new, something that I wanna learn yeah, on how to solve tax audit issue, can we do one thing? Can you just help me do one thing? Those who are already in here, yeah, because we're just starting, Help me share this Facebook Live out. Yes, share this Facebook Live out right now to more people, to your friends, your family, your business partner, your business associates. Let them learn this together with you because it's not often that I will review my secrets. Huh? And today I'll be revealing another secret yeah, on how to solve tax audit issue. And we have bonus session as well today. Today we have another bonus session that is on withholding tax issues, withholding tax on software. Now, if you don't want to miss this, you've got to stay tuned here, but also share this with your friends, your family, your business partner, business associates. Very simple, just share button now if you're viewing it from a phone go to the bottom of the screen you will find that share button just tap the share button right or if you are viewing it from a computer you can just click the share button that you see right from the facebook live okay or if you have anyone in your mind right now that you say hey i have got this friend who also would be interested to learn this tag his or her name into the comment box just tag the name into the comment box right now so that they can come in they can learn this secret together with you yeah all right now it's all not often yeah, that i'll be revealing secrets but today we are talking about withholding tax right we're going to talk about software subscription fee which is a very interesting topic yeah and those who join us for the very first time this is already episode 18. you must be wondering wow Episode 18, uh, what about the previous 17 episodes? Uh, I, I must have missed all of them. Well, don't worry if you have missed the 17 episodes, it's okay because they are all available on my Facebook page. Just go back to my Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow. Go to the video section and you will find all the videos in the video section. Yeah. All right. Okay. I can see more and more people coming in already. And I see some people are actually saying good morning to me, like Richard. Welcome, Richard, to you. Yes, welcome, Richard. Once again, good morning to you. Jess Ngoi is saying good morning to me as well. My morning, Jess Ngoi. And I have Lim Chow Yuan and also saying hello to me. Hi, Lim Chow Yuan. Okay, now, I know there are probably a lot of first-timers today. As usual, I know there are probably some first-timers coming in to learn this secrets reveal, techniques to solve tax audit issues, right? And you probably would say, hey, so you are Zen, is it? Now, yes, yes, let me introduce myself again to those first-timers over here, yeah? right? Yes, my name is Zen, Zen Chow, yeah? And of course, people call me the tax guru of YYC, but that's just what people, uh, are. I mean, that's what people call me. Like, yeah. The fact is that I'm actually the tax director as well as the head of tax department in YYC Group. Yeah. Now, having said that, let me just ask you, you know, every time when I do Facebook Live, I like things to be more interactive. Yeah. Seriously, I don't want to just speak alone in front of this computer, in front of this camera. It's going to be pretty boring. I want things to be more interactive. It's what Facebook Live is all about. I mean, as usual, if you have got any questions along the way, just put your questions into the comment box and I will answer to your questions. Yeah. Let me just ask you the first question. Let me ask you first. Who is the first timer over here? Who actually joined our Secrets Review Series, Techniques to Soft Tax Audit Issue for the very first time? If you're a first timer, can you just put number one? Put number one into the comment box right now. Put number one into the comment box to let me know that you are a first timer. Yeah, let me just be more interactive. Let me ask you the first question. If you're a first timer, can you please put number one into the comment box and let me know that you are a first timer? Yeah, I wanna see. How many first timers are there? All right. Hey, Xing Xuan is also saying good morning to me. Hi, morning, morning, good morning. Yeah, I think this is Kate, right? Yes, Kate. Yeah. Morning, Kate. All right. So let me see who is a first timer. Let me see if you're a first timer. Please put number one. Yeah. Okay. Now, while waiting for you to respond, let me just briefly those first timers. Yeah. 
who are we? Now, you probably know that I'm Zen, yeah, I'm from YYC, but who is YYC over here? Now, let me just briefly explain to you, right, to those first timers here. YYC is actually an accounting and advisory firm, and we were established since 1974, yeah, since 1974, and our brand promise is to empower entrepreneurial success. Now, that's our brand promise, right? But to do that, now, of course, we have our vision, we have our mission. Now, what's our vision over here? We want to be the number one world-class, yeah, world-class accounting and advisory firm in Asia. And our mission is more important, yeah? Our mission is to inspire, inspire everyone, including you, including you who are watching Facebook Live right now, yeah? We want to inspire you as well to overcome your odds, unleash your potential. More importantly, find your fulfillment in life. You see, that's very important mission, isn't it? Yeah, but now, to do all this, to do all this, of course, now, our brand promise is to empower entrepreneurial success, but we need to uphold three important promises. First, we want to share our expertise. Now, why do we want to do Facebook Live today? Why do we want to share, you know, our secret, our techniques to all of you? That's because it's one of our promises. We want to share expertise. We want to show our most proactive care yeah, to everyone out there, especially our client, because we want our client to have the most positive experience ever yeah now if you think yyc is just a normal accounting firm just like any other accounting firms out there no nope, you're wrong because yyc is just just not uh, not just a normal accounting firm we are doing more than a normal accounting firm yeah because a normal accounting firm would be only providing maybe audit service tax service accounting service that's compliance services but we have much more than that we have advisory service as well like strategic planning succession planning valuation you know even the current very hit topic your yeah, cloud or digital transformation yeah we even do that as well we have our very own business school that means we hold a lot of workshops seminars you know from time to time and we serve international firms as well through our global business services like outsource accounting outsource bookkeeping outsource payroll yeah we do all this so now if you see any of these services that interest you feel free to drop us a message ask us further yeah our professional team will get in touch with you and explain more to you yeah now what i see like i said established since 1974 we are turning 47 years old this year and we call ourselves an international firm yes because we don't just have presence in malaysia we also have presence in singapore we have more than 800 employees more than 20,000 clients we have trained more than 130,000 participants throughout all our workshops because we've done more than 5,000 workshops. Now, these are all the awards you're yeah, given to YYC throughout all these years. And having said that, yeah, it's like I say, YYC is not just having presence in Malaysia, we also have presence in Singapore. But of course, in Malaysia, our headquarters is of course in Kuala Lumpur. We also have branches in other Kine Valley areas like Selangor, yeah? And we have branches in Johor, as well as in Penang. All right, now, every time when it come to this part, this is what I always like to, you know, ask you further, yeah, to be more interactive. And now I see close to 100 people already, yeah, already watching our Facebook Live, yeah. As usual, let me just ask you, where are you from? Yeah, can you just tell me again this time, yeah, where are you from? Yeah, where are you viewing our Facebook Live from? You can tell me, like, which state you're from, which town, or which city, right, or uh, which area. If you can, if you say I'm from Kuala Lumpur, it can be more specific, you know, like, which part of Kuala Lumpur are you from? You say, oh, I'm from Kepong, you know, I'm from Churras, you know, like Richard will tell me if Richard's from Churras, I know. <laughs> or you can say, I'm from Stockpark, you know. Tell me, where are you from? Where are you viewing our Facebook Live today from? Yeah, you can say your state, your town, your city, or even your area, you can be more specific, yeah. Put it into the comment box right now. Tell me, where are you from? Let's be more interactive. You know, this is what Facebook Live is all about, yeah. Right, it's not a one-sided thing. I want to have some response from you. Okay, I see someone, oh, just now Carol Huang says first-timer. Hi, Carol, welcome, yeah, well, Welcome for the very first time. Debbie Chong, also a first timer, yeah. Welcome, Debbie. Welcome as well. And I can see, uh, oh, Richard is saying welcome to all new friends. Hi, Richard. <laughs> okay, Liana. Iliana is from Batu Cave. Okay, so we have Iliana responding to say uh, she's from Batu Cave. Yep. Hi, welcome. And where else? Okay, where are the rest from? You can just put it in the comment box here. Yeah? Which state, town, um, area all right, or which city you can tell me where you're from right richard yes Charas, i know i know <laughs> thank you so much for responding and uh, richard okay where else okay uh i see kuala lumpur right, right now i think people are from kuala lumpur do we have anyone from the north from the south or even 
from the East Malaysia, anyone? Yeah, if you are from the East Malaysia, you can just tell me. Yeah, just put it into the comment box right now. Yeah, okay, all right. Uh, oh, Jess also from Cheras. Okay, so Jess Noy and Richard are both from Cheras. Yeah, oh, well, Cheras is very huge, right? A lot of people staying there. Huh? And I always say that the traffic is so congested over there in Cheras. Okay, now, um, okay, well, while we're, while we're waiting for the rest to respond, let's go into our today's topic now. Today, like I said, episode 18 already, yeah. It's episode 18 already, yeah. Yeah. And if you say you have missed the previous 17 episodes, like I told you, don't worry, don't worry about missing the previous 17 episodes because you can go to my Facebook page, that's Tax Guru Zen Chow. Go to Tax Guru Zen Chow Facebook page, and you will find the video section. Go to the video section and you will see all the previous 17 episodes. They're all there for you to watch. But of course, I'll encourage you to go to live session because you can ask questions. Yeah, and I'll be answering to your questions as well. Yeah. Okay, now today. Episode 18 on tax audit or investigation issues. Yeah. What do we want to talk about? 18, yeah. I think those that have already seen the title or those that have already seen the caption of our Facebook Live today, you would know this week that we are going to talk about a very interesting case, and that is relating to software subscription fees. Now, I know a lot of you probably would be subscribing to software, especially for business use, right? I think most business right now would be using software and you have to pay software subscription fee. So the important thing that we want to understand here is, hey, if I pay for software subscription fee, is this expense tax deductible? Is this going to be tax deductible? Of course, most of you will say, of course, it will be deductible. But if I'm going to pay subscription fee for my software, and if this software is used in my business, obviously, it should be deductible, right? Because it's used for business. Now, those that have been following me, right, for the past, you know, 17 episodes, you would have me, you have heard about me talking about this general principles of deductibility before. So let's apply it, right, on software subscription fee. Now, for an expense to be tax deductible, we always have to refer back to this subsection 33, bracket 1 of the Income Tax Act 1967. Yeah? So what are the conditions? Because this section, this subsection uh, is the one that lays out the condition for an expense to be tax deductible. So what is the condition? What are the conditions over there? Now, first, it must be incurred during the period. Now, which obviously, if you pay for sub software subscription, you need to look at you know, what is the period that you're subscribing and you will incur expense for that period. And well, you should be able to satisfy this condition easily, right? Incurred during the period, right? No problem. It must be an outgoing expense. Yeah? It must be an outgoing expense. Well, if you pay, uh, if you subscribe to software, you gotta pay, right? You gotta pay, you gotta have cash outflow. So that's definitely outgoing. Yeah? That's definitely outgoing and expensive. So not an issue for you to satisfy this as well. Now, it must be wholly and exclusively. What do we mean by wholly and exclusively? It means it must be wholly and exclusively used in the business. It must be for business purpose. That means that if you go and subscribe any kind of subscription that is not related to your business at all, right? It's probably for personal use, or you know, this kind of software is not used in your business, yeah, then it will not be deductible. Yeah. But of course, if you see if I have to use a software for my business, it's wholly and exclusively used in my business. Well, then you will satisfy this condition as well, right? So this one is also um, not difficult yeah, to satisfy. Yeah? But of course, if you subscribe to anything that is non-business related, forget about the deduction. Yeah? You won't be able to get any tax deduction. Yeah? Now, this is very important. It must be revenue in nature. Now, what do I mean by revenue in nature? Now, in other words, yeah, right, later I'll show you the comparison between revenue and capital in nature. Yeah? Revenue in nature means you incur and this one doesn't give rise to an asset. You don't acquire an asset. Now, software subscription. Now, I know nowadays, uh, the, sub the software subscription model is, is a little bit different than the olden days, yeah? The old days, last time when we uh, buy software, we have to pay and buy a software and the software is installed in our computer. It becomes our asset, right? It becomes our asset. It's an intangible asset in our computer. But today, we use a lot of, we call cloud software, right? Of which you pay subscription, you pay, you get to use. You don't pay, you don't get to use, right? You don't even get download anything to be put into your uh, computer or you don't even own an asset. So this is very important. Now, if you say I'm paying a subscription fee, pay per use subscription fee, right? Of course, that's revenue in nature because you don't own an asset. 
All right. But if you are paying to get an asset, right, to get an asset to be put into your computer, and even if you don't pay the subscription, you continue to use that software, that is not revenue. That is capital in nature. Yeah. So it will not satisfy this. Uh, so you got to first understand what kind of subscription model are right, you paying? Are you, is it revenue in nature? Or is it capital in nature? So if it's revenue in nature, of course, it's deductible. But if it's capital in nature, you don't get a deduction. Of course, you will say, I will get a capital allowance. Yeah. So it must be revenue in nature. Now, it must be in the production of gross income, which is similar to holding and exclusively, like I said. What you you what you incur, right? The software that you are subscribing to, it must be for you to make more income, right? That means that this software is actually trying to facilitate your whole business and it's trying to make you earn more income now if you satisfy all these then well it could be deductible but just now i told you right we need to differentiate between revenue and capital because i said revenue in nature it satisfies subsection 33 bracket one right it's relating to the operation of your business right and it is deductible it is deductible but if it's a capital in nature if you pay to get a capital asset yeah that has enduring benefit in nature yeah enduring benefit it's a fixed capital, right? A software, it's an asset, yeah? No, if you pay and you get an asset, that is not deductible because Section 39, Sub 1 of the Income Tax Act says, no, this is not deductible. You may be able to get capital allowance, but not a direct deduction, right? So this is what you need to differentiate, yeah? That's just how I told you. If it's revenue in nature, you get deduction. Capital, no deduction. Now, okay, so this is the introduction, like how do you treat a software subscription, right? How do you treat a software subscription? Now, let me just carry on and show you what happened to our client. Now, as usual, I'll be sharing a case and our client has actually paid software subscription fee. They pay software subscription fee and they actually use it for business. But when the Inland Revenue Board comes to audit, the Inland Revenue Board officer disallowed subscription fee right and then revenue board this allowed the subscription fee and say no you don't get deduction what happened what happened now let's look at the background of the case and let's look at the case right now now our client is involved in the business of real estate yeah real estate business renting out more than 50 units of own or lease property yeah so this client of ours right they have a lot of properties right either they own it or they actually list it. They list it and they rent them out. They rent them out, right? Because they're in the real estate business and they have more than 50 units. They have more than 50 units. Huh? They rent out and they earn some um, well, rental income yeah, in that case. Yeah. So now, what happened to our client? What happened to our client over here? Now, this is what this is this is what happened, yeah, right? They incurred subscription fee. Now they incurred subscription fee paid to a Singapore company they pay to a Singapore company for the usage of this Voyager system. And what is this Voyager system all about? Now, this Voyager system is actually a software, right? A software that actually helps you to manage properties, right? To manage property. Now, those that are in the property management line, you probably would have heard about this kind of uh, system, yeah? This kind of system, Voyager system, of which uh, if you are a property management company, yeah, you manage property, you know, you are, you are part of the JMB, you're part of the MC, you probably have heard about this. So this client, they pay subscription to use this software and they pay to a Singapore company, yeah, right? To use this Voyager system and they use it to manage the rental income generated from the properties because they ran out properties, right? They ran out properties and they uh, generate the rental income, okay? Now, see, this software is usually used for managing properties as a property management company. Now they're renting out properties and they use it to manage the rental income. Now, I'll tell you what happened next, yeah, all right? Now, of course, you may probably want uh, notice a little bit things over here. Say, hey, it's paid to a Singapore company, right? And of course, if you pay to a Singapore company, what happened? There could be withholding tax, right? Now, those who understand withholding tax, they say, hey, there could be withholding tax. And do worry about the withholding tax because I'm going to talk about withholding tax more later. Yeah, there's a bonus session later. Yeah. Now, they paid all the withholding tax. All the payment to this Singapore company has been deducted for withholding tax. So they comply with the withholding tax. So now, what could be the issue? If they have used the software to manage the rental income, they have paid the withholding tax. Hey, what could be the issue here? Now, let me tell you. When the Inland Revenue Board 
came in, audit on our client's account, right? And they found out that they have paid such, uh, such subscription fees, right, to this Singapore company for the Voyager system. The Inner Revenue Board say, these expenses are not related to your real estate business. They say, it's not related to your real estate business. Why? Because they say, yeah, hey, you are renting out properties. You do not need this kind of Voyager system. A Voyager system is for you to manage properties, right? Like a management body, right? Like a management corporation. If you are a management body, you want to manage your properties, right? Then yes, you need this Voyager system, but you are in the real estate business. You are renting out properties. You do not need this kind of uh, subscription. You know, this kind of software is not wholly and exclusively in the production of your gross income, they say, right? In the round what say, yeah, to generate rental income, you do not need this kind of Voyager system. You can just have a simple control, like who has paid you rental, who has not paid you rental. That's it, because you don't have to collect maintenance fee or what, right? Yeah, you do not, you do not need all that. Right? So they say the Voyager system is not related to your real estate business. It's not wholly and exclusively in the production of the gross income of the company. So what happened? They disallowed all of the expenses incurred for this Voyager system. The, all the subscription fees paid to the Voyager system is disallowed, right? They are disallowed by the Inland Revenue Board. And let me show you, this is what the Inland Revenue Board says. You see what they say? They say, yeah, they found out that you have paid yeah, to a Singapore company, right? Uh, of course, it's private limited, right? The name has been a uh, 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 mask over here. And you say, you pay for a Voyager, right? SAS, SAS is software as a service, right? Software as a service. Now you pay annual fee like 40 over thousand, 30 over thousand a year, right? They say, all this subscription fee, uh, right? Tidak dapat dikaitkan. See that? Tidak dapat dikaitkan dengan perbelanjaan yang digunakan dalam menghasilkan pendapatan kasar syarikat. Seperti mana? Di bawah section 33, bracket 1. See that? He says, this is not satisfying section 33 sub 1. It's not in the production of gross income. It's not wholly and exclusively for the business because they say cannot relate to your business. Your business is penyewaan premis bangunan. But you go and use a software that is to manage property like a management body. And therefore, in the revenue board, add all of this back. They have added all of this back. Now, imagine how much, how much is being added back. Now, if you just do a rough calculation, uh, this is approximately 150,000 really, you know, approximately 150,000 being added back because they say this is not in the production of gross income. Now, how do we help them? How do we help them? Of course, we went in, right? The client came to us. We did analysis, right? We go and analyze the whole business model and we do this. We appeal for the client. We tell the inner revenue board, right? We say, hey, look, the purpose of the subscription, right? Paid to the Singapore company is for the right to use the Voyager system, right? Of course, you say, I have paid, the Voyager, uh, paid to use the Voyager system and you say the Voyager system it's not related to my business. But first, I prove to you that the whole subscription is really for the right to use a Voyager system. Then I give the RRB the details of uh, the, uh, the features, yeah, the features of this Voyager system. What can this Voyager system do, right? I show them, hey, the Voyager system, even though it's usually used by the property management company, yeah, like a, a management body, right? But the Voyager system has actually a lot more other features. And one of the features here is to control the rental income. Yeah, to calculate, to, uh, to, to monitor the rental income, right? To send reminders, right? To monitor uh, when is the next due date of the rental and things like that, right? So all these are in the Voyager system as well, you know? Even though, yes, our client did not use the full function of the Voyager system, but part of the Voyager system is actually used exactly in the business of our client. Our client is in the business of real estate, right? Real estate business. And they want to use this Voyager system to help them to control. I mean, that's nothing wrong with Even though I'm not using the full feature, but the, what part of the features of the Voyager system is actually for the production of gross income. It's in the production of gross income of our client. Yeah. So they're using the Voyager system for business. It's wholly and exclusively for business. Yeah, so we told them, we tell the inner about what are the features. We give them all the details. 
And of course, yeah, we substantiate with documents, right? We give them all the invoices, the payment proof, and then the agreement. And of course, the details of the Voyager system, right? We release now what other things and how do they relate to our client's business. And of course, after all this explanation, yeah, and, and how we link the features to the production of gross income, the Inland Revenue Board accepted, and see this. This is always the best news that you can get, yeah? I know a lot of you will say, hey, you know, sometimes when the Inland Revenue Board come and check on my account, audit on my account, yeah, they will definitely find something when you know, they will definitely find some fault and ask me to pay penalty, ask me to pay more tax. Not necessarily if you know how to argue it. If Not necessarily if you know how to argue and drop the issue and you look at this, penyelesaian tanpa pelarasan pendapatan. See this? We managed to solve the whole case and zero findings. Zero findings, uh, that means, yeah, the client, right, being audited four years, uh, 2015, 2018, yeah, nothing is uh, wrong. Nothing is wrong. That means everything, all the issues that this client have were facing, they are all dropped because we went in, we analyzed, we argue, we debate, and we managed to help the client to drop all issues. And this client is not, need, uh, need not to pay any extra tax Therefore, no penalty at all, yeah? Penyelesaian tanpa pelarasan pendapatan. See that? So this is always the best or, or the, the best news lah, that you will that you will want to do, yeah? And, you know, if, in case you're still thinking, hey, you know, every time when they come and audit, they definitely they will find something one. Not necessarily. If you know how to handle them, right? If you have the, the correct techniques, yeah, to solve the issue, you can really, you know, uh, solve the case without additional tax and additional penalty. Yeah. So this is how we did for the client. All right. Now, so what's the rationale? And you say, why were we able to do it? Now, the rationale is simple. As long as you try to relate your expenses, right, and say that it's incurred wholly and exclusively in the production of gross income, they will qualify for deduction under subsection 33, bracket 1 of the income tax act. Yeah? So you have to, have to always try to link it back to how this is incurred in the production of gross income. And of course, subscription fee incurred by our client, yeah, it's in the cost of the company's operation and it's definitely related yeah, to the production of the business income and it should be allowable. So that's the rationale of the whole case, yeah. So what's our advice to you? Now, as usual, what's our advice to you, yeah? Now, always understand the nature of each expense. Whenever you incur certain expense, please understand the nature and try to think how can this expense incurred will help me to produce gross income. If you can ensure that the expense incurred is incurred in the production of gross income, then very likely you will be able to satisfy subsection 33 bracket one and get a deduction. Of course, in our case over here, because it's a software fee, software subscription fee, paid to an overseas company, Singapore company, right, which is a non-resident, non-resident company, please ensure withholding tax is remitted, yeah, right? Whenever there is withholding tax, please ensure you comply, pay the withholding tax, then it will be deductible. And of course, make sure you have all the documentation required, right? Like payment proof, right? Uh, is maintained, your banking slip, your official receipt, creditor statement, and things like that, yeah? And if needed, get a confirmation, right? Get a confirmation from the supplier if the amount is very material so that the Supplier confirms that you have actually made such payment. You indeed have such, you know, service, you know, purchase from your supplier, right? So these are the advices that we want to give you, right? To ensure you don't face any issues in future. All right. Okay. Now let's go into the bonus section. Let's go into the bonus section. Yeah, I know you are eagerly waiting for this. Yeah? Let me just briefly touch a little bit on withholding tax. I know some of you yeah, have been always hearing people talking about, hey, you know what? If I'm going to pay software, I got to pay a withholding tax. You know, I have to pay withholding tax. First of all, if in case you are still not sure about what withholding tax is all about, yeah, let me tell you, withholding tax is actually tax to be paid by the non-resident. Seriously, I know a lot of people say, hey, you know, I always pay extra for withholding tax. Actually, you are not supposed to pay extra, you know. It is your non-resident, your non-resident who is actually supplying you with a service, they are supposed to pay. But how do they pay? You deduct, yeah, you deduct their payment. Yeah, that means you don't make them full payment, you deduct a portion and you paid it to the Indian Revenue Board. That's supposed to be the withholding tax. But I know a lot of time you will say, hey, but I can't deduct, you know, I got to pay in full. So I have to come up with an extra, an extra 10% that to be paid to the Indian Revenue Board. Yeah, I know that's usually the case. But first of all, 
Why do we now always hear yeah, that software is subject to withholding tax? That we need to look at royalty income. Now, the royalty income yeah, that we want to look at over here, we have to look at these few sections. Section 2 on the definition of royalty. Section 15, derivation of royalty income, you know, is that really derived from Malaysia? And section 109, yeah, 109, that is, if it is a royalty, if it's derived from Malaysia, there will be withholding tax, yeah, deduction of tax. First, what is royalty? Now, those who have been, uh, if you use a very layman way to talk about royalty, I know you will say, if I take a franchise, if I use someone else's license, of course, I have to pay royalty when I use their name, right, their trademark, their trade name, their license, right? But did you know that in 2017, we are effective from 17 January 2017, yeah, the scope of royalty has been expanded, you know. It has expanded uh, to the very first thing is if you pay any amount, if you pay any amount for the use of or right to use a software, it's now called a royalty. That means that even though you say I'm not actually exploiting the license, I, I don't need to modify the software, as long as I pay money, I get to use the software or I have the right to use software, that is called royalty according to the new interpretation of royalty because section two has been amended and the scope of royalty has been expanded as well. Of course, apart from that, if you have the right to receive, say, visual image or sound, right, transmitted, broadcasting, yeah, that's definitely royalty as well. Yeah, to use uh, uh, or some of the licensed radio frequency, yeah, that's also royalty. And, and if you say I have partial or total forbearance, yeah, that's also royalty. Now, what is partial or total forbearance? Oh, very, very simple. If you say I need to pay some money to someone to stop this person from also providing service to another party. That means uh, I'm saying I have the exclusive rights. Yeah, I have the exclusive rights to use your service. You don't supply the service to someone else. I pay you a sum of money. That is called total forbearance. Yeah, so that is also called a royalty right now. Yeah, okay. So now if you look at the whole definition, of course, it say a royalty includes any sums right paid yeah to a non-resident in respect of using you know copyright software. You see. All right, and of course, to use all the motion picture, the visual image, yeah, broadcasting and things like that, yeah, or the right to use the know-how, yeah, and also uh, to use the uh, right to receive your yeah, visual image, sound, right, right, whether by satellite or by cable, yeah, and the uh, radio frequency as well, and don't forget about the total and partial forbearance. You see, all these leads to software, okay, sorry, leads to royalty, all this leads to royalty, and if it's royalty, they will be holding tax. But I know the very hot issue, the very hot issue that people have been always discussing is, hey, you know what? I am paying Facebook advertisement. I'm paying Google advertisement. Why people say this one is subject to withholding tax? Now, before we go into that, yeah, you see, Section 2 already defined what software, right? But I know you probably still cannot relate. I pay Facebook, I pay Google, right? How can that be relating to software? I'll tell you later. First, we need to know, now, if this is really a royalty, we also need to look at whether the royalty is derived from Malaysia. Yeah? How do you know whether this income earned by the non-resident, uh, income earned by the foreigner, uh, whether it is derived from Malaysia or not? Actually, very simple, you know, very simple. Look at this. If any one of this is satisfied, if any of this is fulfilled, Section 15 says this income earned by the uh, foreigner, earned by the non-resident, uh, is derived from Malaysia. They say, who is responsible to pay? If the responsibility to pay lies with the government or state government or local authority, then it's actually derived from Malaysia. That means uh, if, if the payment made out of our government, uh, it, it's derived from Malaysia. You know? Or if the responsibility to pay lies with a resident, a resident of Malaysia, that means that uh, if you are a resident in Malaysia, your company is a resident company in Malaysia, and you are responsible to pay such amount to the non-resident, to the foreigner, hey, this amount becomes derived from Malaysia, you know. Or, or uh, right, either one, right? I say, or if you say this royalty charge out, uh, is charged out as an expense in your Malaysian account. <laughs> if it's charged out as an outgoing or expense, uh, against an income from Malaysia. That means if it's charged out as an expense to deduct your revenue in Malaysia, that means that this is a Malaysian business, right? You have an expense to deduct against your Malaysian income. Hey, this becomes a Malaysian source income to the non-resident, which is the royalty paid to them. So you see, it's so simple. That means if you pay, you as a Malaysian resident, you charge this out in your Malaysian uh, business PL, that becomes an income 
of derived from Malaysia for the foreigner. Now, if this is a royalty derived from Malaysia, they will be withholding tax. They will be withholding tax. But let's go back to just now I talked about the Facebook advertisement, the Google advertisement. Now, people are always asking me, if I pay to use Facebook advertisement, I pay to use Google advertisement, hey, this is not software where I didn't buy any software where now. This is the clarification from the practice note number one, 2018, issued by the Inland Revenue Board. They say, yes, we understand digital advertising provided by non-resident could be royalty, could not be, could be not royalty. But how do we differentiate? You see, first we look at the differences between a, a normal advertising service and this Facebook advertising. If you pay for a normal advertising, yeah, what would happen is you pay the advertiser, the advertiser would help you do the advertising, right? It's a service. You pay them, they design your advertisement, they publish it for you. When you tell them what you want, where you want to publish it, they do it for you. They design the advertisement for you. Now, if this is what happened, it's a service. Now, if it is a payment for provision of service, right, and it does not uh, involve any purchase or use of an app, yeah, no, no, no such thing, right? It's a service. If there is withholding tax, it should be under Section 109B, capital B. And that is a, this service, we also have to look at where is it rendered. If this service is performed to you overseas, then there's no withholding tax because Section 109B now has an exemption that says if the service performed is performed overseas, there's an exemption, there's no withholding tax involved. Only when this service is performed in Malaysia, there will be withholding tax. Now, do you know, if you use F uh, Facebook, if you use Google, this is not the case. You don't pay Facebook, you don't pay Google and tell them, hey, you designed the advertisement for me. You help me to publish, right? You help me to see who to target. You don't, right? What you do is you go and design your own advertisement. You go and select your own target. What you get to use is you get to use the platform. What you are paying Facebook and Google is for the usage of the platform. And to the Inland Revenue Board, when you get to use the platform, it's using the software. Because the platform that Google and Facebook has developed, that's a software. And if you are only given you know, the rights to go into the platform, design your own advertisement and publish your own advertisement, you know, target whoever you want to target, this is called payment for the rights do software. This kind of digital advertising is then called a royalty and section 109 will apply and that is why and then Revenue Board says this is a royalty subject to the tax. See that? That is how you differentiate it. All right. Okay. So now that's the bonus thing that I want to bring up to you. That's the bonus thing I want to bring up to you. Of course, if you say, hey, you want to know more about withholding tax, you want to learn more about withholding tax, yeah, just a very short advertisement over here. I actually have a workshop. Yeah. I actually have a workshop of my own, of which I do. I tell you everything about withholding tax. Right? I'll tell you everything. What is withholding tax? You know, what are the things that are subject to withholding tax, you know, and how to calculate and things like that. Yeah. If you're interested with that, Always drop us a message, right? You can always drop us a message and we'll tell you more about, you know, my very own workshop that talks about withholding tax, yeah? But go back to this tax audit. What we have shared earlier was, you see, even if you think that, you know, a software that you have been using, it is related to your business and you claim deduction, the Inland Revenue Board may not agree, you know? They may come in and they may say, this is not related to your business, you know? I have to disallow it because I don't see how it's relating to your gross business, yeah? I don't, I don't see how it's relating to the production of gross income. So, if you say, hey, I also face this kind of a funny issue where I think I'm supposed to get deduction, but the Inland Revenue Board audit on my account and then they say, hey, this is not deductible. You know, I have to add this back. You have to pay extra tax. You have to pay additional tax and penalty as well. Don't be afraid, right? Let me tell you, don't be afraid if you receive a tax audit letter. If you receive any tax audit letter that tells you you are going to pay extra tax, you're going to pay penalty, don't be afraid. Don't be panicked first. Come to us send us the letter, right? Drop us a message at our Facebook page. You can either go to YYC Advisors or my very own Facebook page, Tax Guru Zen Chow. Go to our Facebook page, drop us a message, send us a letter, show us the letter. We can do a complimentary, complimentary online consultation for you and see how we can help you to solve the tax audit issues because this is what we are doing, right? This is what YYC have been doing. We want to help you to solve tax audit issues. All right. So, that's uh, what I want to share with you. And I can see 
questions are coming in, right? I can see Uma Devi has just posted the first question. So it's Q&A time. And if you have got any questions at all, feel free to put in your questions right now and, and I'll be answering to all your questions, yeah? All right, so let me just drink some water and then I'll go to all your questions. Okay, so let me go back to this page. Now just to show, for you, for me to show you like this is our Facebook page, yeah? Right, and like I said, if you want to go back to our previous 17 episodes, go to my Facebook page, Text Guru Zen Chow, go to the video section, go to the video section, and you can get all the videos from there, right? You can get all the videos from there, all the previous 17 episodes. And don't forget, don't forget, go to my Facebook page, like it, share it, and most importantly, follow it. <laughs> follow my Facebook page, yeah? All right, let me just look at the very first question here. That's from Uma Devi, okay? Uma Devi is asking this question. If company pay annual fee for using non-resident software, now, so you're saying that if I pay annual fee for using a non-resident software, is this subject to withholding taxes or not? Is it? Are, are you trying to ask that? Or are you trying to say, is this tax deductible? Uh, let me answer both. Uh, let me answer both. Yeah? Now, Uma Devi, if you say I'm paying annual fee for using a non-resident software, of course, you have to pay withholding tax, but because usage of software, right, and payment made to a non-resident is subject to withholding tax, right? Of course, there will be withholding tax involved, yeah? But in terms of whether it is deductible or not deductible, that again goes back to the basic principle of Section 33, sub 1, yeah? Whether it is incurred in the production of gross income, whether it is a revenue in nature or not. If you say it is an annual fee, yeah, then I suppose it's revenue in nature, yeah? And, uh, and, but if you say I'm buying the software, right, I get an intangible asset, that is capital in nature. You don't get a direct deduction, but you may be able to claim capital allowance for that. All right. Okay, next I see Sharon. Sharon Ku is asking this question. Hi, Zen. I found that there's a payment of 6% service tax for Google advertisement. Am I still need to declare withholding tax? If yes, that means I paid twice to the government. It looks unfair to us. <laughs> Sharon, first of all, it's not unfair. And why do I say I'm not trying to help the government, right? I'm not trying to say, oh, the government is always right. I'm, I'm not saying that, yeah. But I would say it's not unfair. Why? Because you see, first, there are two, these are two different things. Service tax is governed under Service Tax Act and it is monitored by the uh, uh, customs, yeah, Royal Malaysian Customs. Whereas we Holding tax, we holding tax is under the Income Tax Act, and it's actually uh, monitored by the Inland Revenue Board. So there are two different agents looking after, and two different acts. Yeah. Now, six percent service tax indeed is your cost because when they um charge you on advertisement, when Google charge you on advertisement, they have registered for the digital service tax, they will charge you service tax of six percent. But withholding tax, withholding tax, it's actually rightfully not supposed to be your cost not supposed to be why because i told you right when you make payment to the non-resident you're supposed to deduct you're supposed to take away yeah uh, you, uh, by default it's 10 percent uh, take away 10 percent from it pay only 90 percent and the 10 percent is actually payable to the inland revenue board on behalf of the non-resident it represents the tax of the non-resident but i know most of the time you're not able to we are not able to deduct because the software provider will say no you gotta pay me make me full payment i don't care about your withholding tax yeah i know right so uh what well, the reason is because yeah um you couldn't deduct therefore you have to pay on your own but the whole theory here is that you're supposed to deduct yeah you're only supposed to pay 90 percent to them or ask them to reimburse back the 10 percent to you that's why there are two different things you're supposed to only incur one cost which is a six percent service tax yeah so i would say two different rules two different acts two different agents governing it. So therefore, well, we can't help it. Yeah, both withholding tax and service tax are still applicable. Yeah, both are applicable, yeah. Okay, now I have another question here from Xin Xuan. Xin Xuan is asking, would like to ask you, uh, ask what if we sign up an app, yeah? Payment through local telco, like a um, access monthly or call payment. Do we still need to pay withholding tax? Now, Xin Xuan, first of all, is this for business use, all right? If it's for personal use, forget about withholding tax. And I remember, remind you, if it's for personal use, it's no withholding tax because it's not even charged out as an expense in your account, yeah? It's for personal, right? But if it's for business, if it's for business and you sign up an app, okay? And you sign up through Telco. Now, who are you paying? Are you paying overseas resident, non-resident? Or are you paying local Telco? You are paying local Telco, right? If you are paying local Telco, 
you are not paying a non-resident. So why would they be withholding tax? You see, this is very important. Who are you paying would determine whether there's withholding tax or not. So you are paying a local telco. You say, example, Maxis. Maxis is a local company. It's a resident, right? So if you're paying Maxis, you are not paying a non-resident, right? So there will not be any withholding tax implication. Of course, Maxis may have, like, when Maxis pay the overseas party, yeah, but when you pay local telco, they will not be withholding tax because you're not paying a non-resident, okay? All right. Okay, as you say, it's for business purpose. All right, okay, I get it. Okay, wow, looks like uh, not many questions today and I've answered to all of them. Now, let me remind you, if there's any question at all, please put it in the uh, comment box and I'll be answering to all your questions, yeah? But let me again reiterate that if you, right, receive any tax audit letter, if you say that, hey, you know, I'm not supposed to get... You know, I, I don't agree. I don't agree with the Inland Revenue, but I do not know. I do not know how to appeal. I do not know how to argue with them. And if you receive any tax audit letter that comes up with audit findings asking you to pay more tax, pay more penalty, don't be afraid at all. Don't be afraid at all. Come to us, drop us a message. You can send a message to either our YMC advisors or go to my tax guru central page. Send us a message here. We can look at your case, give you a complimentary consultation and see how we can help you solve it. All right. So always remember, yeah, do not panic. Do not be afraid when you receive tax audit letter. Okay. I have another question here from Vivian, right? Vivian is asking, uh, withholding tax should exclude SSP, is it? Just to double confirm. Yeah, if you ask me, yes, it should be excluding all the SSP. Why? Because SSP is not the value of the service, right? Withholding tax is always calculated on the value of the service. Yeah? SSP is actually on top of the value of the service and so yes, you should exclude the SSP when you calculate your withholding tax. Yeah, right. So that's to Vivian. Then we have a question from SP Fong. SP Fong is asking: Company need to pay withholding tax for trading software license? Now, SP Fong, very good question. Yeah. Now let me just tell you what happened. Yeah. If you ask uh, Inland Revenue Board, if you're going to ask Inland Revenue Board, uh, let me tell you, Inland Revenue Board will say trade even trading of software license. Yeah, it is subject to withholding tax. Let me tell you, okay? if you ask in revenue, they will tell you. But but let me just also highlight to you that that's actually a case law. It's actually a case law yeah, where the taxpayer says, hey, I'm only trading software license. I am not using it at all. I'm not using it. If, if you say I buy a trade a software, right, and then I go and uh, modify a bit, I add on some other things uh, before I resell it to the client, then yes, I'm using it. But I'm only buying and reselling. I'm not doing any modification at all. Yeah, I'm just merely trading stock. Yeah. In this case, uh, the taxpayer actually won. In this case, the taxpayer actually won and say this is not a royalty and there's no withholding tax. Yeah, but but I have to tell you, Inland Revenue Board's view is that even trading of license is subject to withholding tax already. So it's really depending on whether you want to take you know, this case law as reference and say, I don't want to pay withholding tax. I don't think this is subject to withholding tax. Or you just say, ah, I do not want to have a lot of trouble in future. Like, ah, since the amount is not huge, I'll just pay, you know, and just, you know, get the software uh, uh, deducted and that's it. Yeah, so it's really on how you want to look at it. I'm just, tell I'm telling you, IRB's view is this, right? But we have case law to support as well, okay? All right, now we have Sharon. Oh, Sharon again and say, if we didn't pay for withholding tax, is it the whole amount from the advertisement will be added? Yes, Sharon, if you don't pay withholding tax at all, yeah, and if that advertisement is subject to withholding tax, yeah, if that's subject to withholding tax, yeah, then by not complying to withholding tax, the whole amount will be added back, will not be deductible, including the service tax, yeah, including any SSP, yeah, because the SSP has deductibility depends on the deductibility of the principal amount, right? If the principal amount is not deductible, the SSP not deductible also, yeah, Sharon, so not that. Okay, next is Candice. Candice Chong is asking, Hi Zen, should I keep all the faded receipts? Or oh, I can keep photocopy receipts, we'll do. Now, Candice, this is what I will say. If you know all these receipts are carbon paper receipts, yeah? Make a photocopy, right, in case it got it gets faded, yeah? But you still keep the original. Even if it's faded, just keep it so that you can at least tell the Inland Revenue, hey, I'm keeping the original, yeah? But you see, everything faded. And now I have a photocopied one, right? So they will then accept the photocopy, right? Okay. Next is Pung, Pung Nida. Pung Nida is asking, yeah? Now, 
time if I claim amount paid to Google for advertisement, but I don't pay withholding tax to IRB. Can I exclude the amount from tax computation? Now, boom, you are trying to say, can I exclude the amount? That means you don't want to claim deductibility at all, is it? You don't want to claim deduction at all, is it? Now, of course, if you don't claim deduction, you will not have the issue of claiming expenses that you cannot claim. Lah. But let me just tell you, uh, you still cannot run away from your obligation, your responsibility to deduct or pay withholding tax. Uh, you still cannot run away from the responsibility to remit withholding tax. The only thing is that from tax computation, yes, you have not claimed any expenses that you are not supposed to claim. That is okay. But right, your uh, 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 withholding tax responsibility is still there. Okay, all right. Next is Sharon Tay. Sharon Tay is asking, how many percent is the only tax for usage of software from overseas provider? Sharon, the default rate, uh, the default rate for royalty is 10%. Yeah, is 10%. Yeah? But of course, I would advise you if you are paying uh, for uh, uh, for this usage of software to a, to an overseas service provider, look at whether there is any double tax agreement signed between Malaysia and the country of the service provider or not. If there is a double tax agreement, look at the royalty article and see whether there's a reduced rate. If there is a reduced rate, get a certificate of residence from the overseas service provider. Get their certificate of residence so that you can apply and use the lower rate. Otherwise, it will be default 10%. All right. Now, CP, CP Singh is asking, how uh, does withholding tax apply to normal products other than service? Well, if, uh, withholding tax is always applicable to service only. Right? It's always applicable to service. It's not applicable to goods. Yeah? It's not applicable to goods. It's applicable to service only. Right. Next is Jacqueline. Jacqueline is asking, hi, would I like to ask, uh, pay for commission for non-resident. Do we need to pay withholding tax if they bill us as management fees? Now, Jacqueline, commission is subject to withholding tax if it's a casual income. Now, if it's a casual income, management fee, well, if it's satisfied, if it's not a casual income, if it's really a management fee, yeah, right? Then if it's satisfied the section 109B, you know, just now I told you that there, 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 uh, another uh, uh, section that we have to look at, right? If it's actually, if it, um, Fulfill Section 109B, you look at where is the management performed, where is the management service performed. If it's performed in Malaysia, then yes, there will be still withholding tax. If the management uh, service is performed overseas, then no withholding tax. Yeah. So, Jacqueline, I think you probably want to know more about withholding tax, right? Like, just like a little bit of advertisement. If you really want to know everything about withholding tax, what kind of service is subject to withholding tax, drop a message. Drop a message, right? We can tell you more about our workshop, our withholding tax workshop. Yeah. Okay, next, uh, Angela. Angela has a question over here. Accounting software also have you holding tax? Why not? It's software web. <laughs> it's software web. If you pay for the usage of software, any software, any software, right? Be it accounting software, architectural software, or whatever software, if you pay to use software, it could be subject to withholding tax. Yeah, all right. So, Angela, I hope I've answered to you. Okay, you, UKH is asking a, a long question over here. I wish to ask uh, on the add on version of previous question. If we sell software subscription license from overseas to a local customer, how do we handle withholding tax, right? In this case, how to expense it? Now, you, I think I've answered just now, yeah. If you resell, if you resell a software subscription license, yeah. The IRB, right? First of all, if you say you are doing certain modification or if you're using this resell, uh, this software uh, license, yeah, when you resell, you will actually add on more things. Uh, you add on more things into your, uh, when you resell or you modify a certain things, right? Definitely, the IRB will say you are using the software and you will need to pay withholding tax for that. Yeah, definitely. But if you say, I'm purely reselling, I buy, I resell, I'm, I'm not doing anything. IRB still thinks that it is subject to withholding tax. Yeah, if you ask in the Revenue Court, they will still think it is. But I told you, there's a case law. There's a case law that says uh, purely buying and reselling this software, I'm treating it as a product, right? The taxpayer actually won the case and say it's not royalty and not subject to withholding tax. But you've got to really look at your own situation, whether it is really exactly the same as the case law or not. Yeah. So if you say, I, my case is really as for the case law and you want to rely on the case law, well, you can take the chance and do it and don't uh, remit withholding tax. But you got to know IRB will challenge you and you got to be prepared, you know, to argue with the Inland Revenue Board, you know, with the case law. Okay. All right. Pung. Pung Nida is asking if I want to pay withholding tax, but I was late. I know I need to pay penalty. You know? Do I need to capture the payment for withholding tax in a cruel basis first? Now, of course, Pung, if you are late in paying withholding tax, there will be a 10% penalty, a 10% penalty on top 
on top of the withholding tax payable. That means that the building tax payable that you have to make, there will be another 10% penalty on it. Yeah. So you say, do I have to capture the payment for withholding tax in a cruel basis? Well, not really. You, know, you don't really have to do a cruel basis, but you need to quickly settle this withholding tax and penalty because if you don't do that, you would not get deduction for the principal expense or so. Yeah, you need to pay the withholding tax and the penalty. All right, UK is asking, hi again, subscribing to CCTV Cloud Storage Service provided by overseas service provider. It's not generate, it's not for generating income for, for office use. How to handle this case? Now, you uh well, I I do not know how to really advise you on this because you asked me how to handle the case. Why don't you uh, if you say you're subscribing to CCTV Cloud Storage? If you say this is really for your business, right? And, and you say this is not directly generate uh, for generating income, but it is actually part and parcel of your business. I would say it seems like you can get deduction, but have you looked at whether that's withholding tax or not? Now, because you say you are using CCTV cloud storage, let me tell you, if it's merely using storage, yeah, if it's just a storage fee, yeah, it's not using of software. But if you are using the whole system, then it could be software. So you, I would say, I would advise them, if you really want us to look at this properly and advise you on whether this is supposed to be holding tax or not, how can you, you know, um, do something to get the max, uh, maximum tax efficiency or maximum tax deduction, why don't you drop us a message? Yeah, let us, you know, look into your case. Who knows, we can give you an advisory service on this. Yeah, you, this is what my advice to you. Lah. Because over here, I don't have enough information. I can't really tell you or advise you what to do next. Yeah. Okay, I'll answer to the uh, few more questions, then I'll have to call it a day. I know questions are coming in. I'll probably answer until Kung Nider's question. Lah. That's it. Lah. Okay, Chuan is asking, Chuan Y Ng, uh, if our overseas supplier builds us the hardware software of which uh, we paid the import sales tax for both of them, do we need to pay withholding tax for the software? Well, Chuan, if you know there is a payment for usage of software, yes, you still need to pay. You still need to pay. Yeah? You still need to pay withholding tax. Yeah? Right? That's the answer already. Very simple. Angela say, buying software from local also apply to withholding tax? No, no, no. Angela, I told you, only payment to non-resident is subject to withholding tax. Local, no withholding tax. Okay? All right. Candice Chong asking, does first year local subscription fee subject to tax deductible? Well, Candice, it depends on whether it is revenue in nature or capital in nature. Yeah? If you say you pay the subscription fee to get you know, a software, an asset, an intangible asset, of course, not deductible. But if it's a pay-per-use subscription fee, even first year, it will be deductible, right? So it really depends on your case, whether this is revenue or capital in nature, whether you get any intangible asset or not, yeah? All right, the last two questions, yeah? Pung and Po Pang Min, right? I'll answer these last two questions, yeah? Pung Nider is asking, yeah, when we want to pay withholding tax, we only have the invoice from the service provider. I don't have the payment proof because boss never provide. <laughs> will IRB accept? Now, Pung, you need to have that payment proof, yeah? Ask your boss to give you, I know sometimes you say the boss use the credit card to pay. Also ask for the credit card statement because if you don't have that, yeah, maybe the IRB will not accept. Now, I'm not saying 100% they will not accept, but they may not accept because they, they, they do not know when is your payment date. You need to look at your payment date and see whether it is already late or not, right? So you need that. Any payment proof, right? The credit card statement or any uh, payment receipt or whatever to prove that, uh, to show that as well. Okay, last question over here. Paul, Paul Pang Min, I went to LHGN Cyber Giant and Bangi, asked them about paying withholding tax, but the officers said they have no clue. How do I process them? <laughs> Paul Pang Min, okay. You asked the IRB officer, but they said they have no idea how to do it, right? Let me tell you, talk to us. Send us a message, Paul Pang Min, we can help you. If you say you want to pay withholding tax, you need our service to help you to handle the withholding tax, yeah? We definitely can provide this service to you. Come to us, talk to us, right? We can help you to do all the withholding tax, fill up the form, make payment and everything. Yeah, we have that service, yeah? Drop us a message, yeah, Paul Pang Min. Okay, la, final, la, one extra one, la, all right? This is for Vivian. La. Hi, Zen, my company is paying a monthly service provider fee outside Malaysia, so no need withholding tax right well you say you pay a monthly service fee yeah monthly service provider fee for outside malaysia what kind of service you got i mean you you, you cannot just tell me i'm paying a monthly service what kind of service yeah because certain service is subject to withholding tax certain service may not yeah so vivian my advice to you is now if you really want us to look into your case why don't you drop us a message give us more details what kind of monthly service is this yeah then only i would be able to tell you whether this is subject to withholding tax or not now i know a lot of people have a lot of questions about withholding tax yeah i can see all oh, everything is asking about withholding tax let me remind you again let me do some pub uh, publicity and some advertisement again yeah we have a workshop 
only to talk about withholding tax. We have a workshop just to discuss about withholding tax. If you are interested, drop us a message. Go to our Facebook page, drop us a message. Tell us you are interested to know about the withholding tax workshop. Yeah, Our professional team will give you more details about that. Then you would know all, everything about withholding tax already. Okay, so thank you so much. It's one hour already. Wow, one hour already, right, this time. Yeah, thank you for joining our Facebook Live again, right? And hope you today have a great session. I see so many questions. I hope you understand better about software subscription and you understand better about the withholding tax on software fees, yeah, all right? So thank you so much and I hope I can see you again next week. Yeah, and like I said, every week, I'll try to do it every week unless I have some emergency stuff or some very urgent things uh, that I cannot do. Otherwise, every week, every Friday, 11 o'clock, we will be doing this secrets reviews, techniques to solve tax audit session, yeah? Follow my Facebook page. I remember, go to my Tax Guru Zen Chow Facebook page. Like, share it. Most importantly, follow my Facebook page so that you get a first-hand information on whatever new things that I want to share with you all. All right. So thank you again. Yes, Richard, you, Carol, Sharon, Jacqueline, you are most welcome. You're most welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, And thank you. I hope to see you again next time. All right. So till then, have a good Friday and have a good weekend ahead. All right. I shall see you again next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, all. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.